I'm a bit on the fence about sharing some of my personal quirky decluttering because I don't know how helpful it would be to normal people. But, um, but I guess part of the point of this whole challenge is to help us help each other see that everybody's a little weird and it's okay to take an honest look at your weird stuff and let it go or find a better home for it. So one of the weird things that I kept seeing as I was looking for stuff to declutter and I kept avoiding touching it was, um, it is what it says. It's, it's seal bones. I mean, technically it might be sea lion bones because I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Specifically, I have half of a jaw that I found on a beach and, and I have a vertebrae, which I almost 100% sure this is an Atlas C1 vertebrae, probably from a sea lion. A little string of some more vertebrae um, yes, held together by their, you know, tissues. And some more vertebrae from the same thing, um, also found in the sand at the beach. And a couple of ribs, probably from the same critter that the vertebrae were from. And a tooth that I think came out of that jawbone. Two dried out discs from that spine. Yeah, it's a little bag of bones. And um, I think they're super cool. As you know, I'm a chiropractor, so um, chiropractors like to save all the vertebrae and C1s that they can find. But what was I doing with it? I was doing a bunch of nothing with it. It was just in a bag, labeled, and it was stored away. So, and I didn't have any plans for anything to do with it. I just like them because I found them on the beach and their bones. So anyway, I was visiting a friend's office today, fellow chiropractor, and he is a craniopath, which means he studies the skull. So he's super into skulls. And he showed me today what he found on the beach after some big storms. And he found a couple of almost complete skulls, probably of sea lions also. But, um, but anyway, he was super excited. And then he showed me he also found a couple of scapulas, a couple of which are shoulder blades, probably from the same animal. And he found um, a clavicle collarbone. So I thought maybe I should give him my bones because guess what? His bones were all on display in his office. So he's got a couple of display shelves. So they're lined up there with the other skulls and bones and stuff. And he, and he looks at them and he enjoys them and he shows them to people and other people get to enjoy them. And that's, that's how these things should be. They shouldn't just be in a creepy little brown bag in the corner of my storage bin. What's the point of that? So I'm gonna pack them up nice and send them to my buddy. So I'm decluttering this little bag of bones. And this is another thing that's possibly unique to me. As you know, I do a thing called post-crossing. I mail postcards to people. And so, you know, but I usually put multiple cards in an envelope because I like to send a postcard plus a promotional postcard for my book. And sometimes another postcard. Sometimes people like you know, they mention in their profile things that like they're, they might be a tea drinker or something. So then I might put like a tea bag in there or sometimes people collect coins. So like I'll put a nice quarter in there or something. So anyway, sometimes it's fun to send people like a little extra something if they happen to mention it and if you happen to have whatever random thing. So I started a little box where I would put random things such as beer coasters because some people are like, oh, by the way, I collect beer coasters. So then when I would find one, I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna save one. So if I come across a profile of someone who collects them, then I'll already have one and then I can do that. Over time, this little box has become full of crap. It's a large box. It's almost like the world's tiniest thrift shop, sort of. And there's just all this random crap in here. I kind of want to like dump the whole box. And I kind of don't, because there's stuff in here that's valuable. Like for example, here is 
is an official enamel pin um, of the year of the rabbit stamp that came out. I got it at the stamp dedication ceremony. So as you know by now, I don't wear pins, but somebody would love this little stamp pin because because I write to a bunch of postal enthusiasts. So, so I just hang on to it, waiting for the right person to send it to. Like I have this whole booklet that I thought was so cute. It's called Little Letters for Lunch. And it's so cute. It's these tiny little envelopes. And then you, you write a cute little note on it and you can fold it up. And then in the back of this, there's these stickers to seal them with, and they're so adorable. This is perfect if you make lunches for somebody you love and you just want to put a little cute note in there. This would have been great 15 years ago when I had a five-year-old, but now I have an almost 21-year-old. I don't make his lunches and I don't put little, I don't think he wants these little cute notes from me in there. And actually there's nobody. So I thought, I just thought, well, maybe I'll make tiny notes and put them in the envelopes with the postcards. I never do that. And I got this other one, and this is Little Notes of Thanks. And it's exactly like the Little Notes of Lunch. It's just marketed different because of suckers like me who will buy two identical things thinking they're different. And I have things like random googly eyes just because I think it's so hilarious when I'm out and about in the world and I see that someone has put like googly eyes on something, um, like a mailbox. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to get some googly eyes and do some benevolent vandalism too. But I never get around to that. Just like random stuff that I pick up along the way. Magnets, a weird guitar pick, necklace thingy. I found another random guitar pick that I have no idea where it came from. And I do have a guitar, which I haven't played in a long time, but this is a terrible guitar pick, so why do I have it? And who would I mail it to anyway? Who would you mail a crappy generic guitar pick to? I have an airplane Air Force One magnet that I've been meaning to send to my friend Timothy in Russia, but we haven't been able to mail anything to Russia since the Ukraine war started. Here's a little change purse that's really adorable, and I keep meaning to send it to somebody, but who? what I send it to. I don't know. And here's a cute necklace or bracelet. It can be a bracelet or a necklace. Uh, I guess, I don't know. It's a piece of jewelry that somebody left at my house like probably like five years ago and I keep thinking, well whoever left it is gonna come and remember it one of these days. Um, nobody's ever remembered it or come back for it and I don't want to throw it away so I keep it in the box but probably time to let it go. These are some great yes socializing, no socializing buttons I got from the nerd cruise that I went on last year. This one is great. It says, no, I do not want to do friend shipping right now. And this one says, yes, I do want to do friend shipping right now. So you put it on your lanyard so people know if you're in the mood to socialize or not. It's a great idea, but I don't wear buttons. I don't need to keep these. This box also illustrates something else about the container method. So the idea is the container determines how much stuff you keep. So it's okay if I want to keep a box of random stuff to send people, but it has to follow the rules of the container. So if this is my container, and I do think this is a reasonable size container for this shit, um, then I've got to throw away enough of this stuff that I can get a lid back on it and that I can find stuff in there. So the rules of the container method is that, that a container should be considered full when it's 50 to 60-ish percent full. So that means I have to throw away at least half of this stuff. All right, well, I didn't count how many things I pulled out of this box, but victory. I can get the lid on it. It's been decluttered far enough that I can close the lid. It's not down to the halfway full mark. There's still a bunch of stuff in there. Yes, including the little cute notes. But the container is honored and we can call it good enough for now. And here's a huge book that's a big visual win off of my bookshelf. 
It's this massive book of 101 opera librettos. It's bigger than a family Bible, I think. As you may or may not know, I'm a big opera fan. I see lots of operas. Since moving to San Francisco, I've probably seen about 70 operas. And finally, at this point in my life, I've reached the pinnacle. This is my first year when I bought season ticket to, um, to the box seats. It's like a dream come true. I feel super, super fancy. So I love opera. However, um, I don't need to own a big book of 101 opera librettos. Uh, when I finally looked through the book, there's only about this much of it that I am super, super interested in, which is like, I guess the Wagner section. I really love, uh, I really love Wagner operas, but um, I really don't need the book because guess what? There's this crazy thing called the internet where you can find any and all of these librettos right there. Nobody needs the book anymore. And here I found a folder of my old medical lab results from ages and ages ago. Let's see, from 2016 and before. It's 2024 as I record this video. I don't need my lab results from 2016 and before. It's just kind of a sad record for me to look back and go, hmm, I had the blood chemistry of a younger person back then. Definitely don't need these hard copies. I'm pretty sure I scanned them into Evernote anyway, so if I'm ever feeling nostalgic for my old blood work numbers, I can just look them up anytime. Nobody needs these.